What's up, Moto Buddies? Mike here from Taco Moto Co. and Baja Taco Tours. Today I have a little Mythbusters episode for you. This one will be short and very topic specific. This is about conductor, uh, conductive and non-conductive grease for electrical terminals. So uh, I don't understand why there's so much controversy over this. This is uh, kind of ridiculous. It's super straightforward. But it has to do with uh, the reality uh, and the facts surrounding when you insulate a terminal, an electrical connector, whether or not you should use a conductive grease, which is what I have here on the left. So this is a carbon infused conductive grease. This will flow electricity through itself. And then over here on the right, you have a non-conductive, otherwise known as a dielectric grease. This base happens to be silicone. There are other dielectric greases that use other bases than silicone. I happen to like silicone. Silicone is water repellent. It's economical, it's clean, it's clear. It wipes off very easily. Um, and it's uh, something that we use every single day. I go through many tubes of this uh, a year of, of this exact product. Now there's different different kinds out there. The uh, Dow Corning, Mesis 111. Uh, this is uh, commonly used by a lot of aerospace mechanics. I know there's a lot of airplane mechanics that use this, airframe mechanics, and so that's pretty common in their toolboxes. Uh, the Jet Lube product is what I use, but I look, I use them both. We've been using both tubes for years, so maybe it has more to do with what's on hand and what I can get at my local supply house. So let's talk about the conductivity of the two greases. So this grease right here has electrically active carbon inside of it. And so the, um, here, let's, let's take a meter here. We're gonna put, uh, we're set up to ohms, we're reading ohms. So when we put it on the dielectric grease, the non-conductive silicone grease, we see that there is no electrical continuity. There is no conductivity between the media itself. And so electrons are not passing through it. So this is inert. This material is electrically inert. And I'm gonna wipe this off here. And we'll do it through the conductive grease. And you see that we have continuity through the media itself. So the grease is conductive it does flow and conduct electricity. So it, it's not uh, electrically active, but it's not passive. So it doesn't, um, uh, it's not like the others. So that would be uh, like, you could say this would be wood. Okay, and this could be water in terms of like its conductivity. Now, I never ever use a conductive grease. And let me tell you why, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, take a look at this rag, take a look at my hands. There is uh, carbon black in there, and it is an absolute disaster. It's a mess. It gets on everything. It gets everywhere. It's very hard to clean up. Uh, you'll be able to get this off with soap and water, but if you have this on your connectors, that's going to be on your on, on your bike, on your wiring. It's going to get on your hands. You're going to touch your bike. If you have white plastics, this will go into the white plastic and be difficult to clean out. That's an absolute nightmare. The other reason we never use this is because take this Molex conductor or this uh, Molex connector, for example, this is a female. And so if you get this uh, grease inside of here and you have any trace grease that, that jumps between two of the conductors, then let's say you have a positive and negative here and some of this grease forms a bridge, a grease bridge between the two, then you have a short, you have an active short. And so you're flowing electrons from the positive to the negative side. Um, and so you're reducing the capacitance of the circuit. You are um, creating heat. That's an electrical load. You could pop the fuse. There's all kinds of things that can go on. So if you were, for example, let's say you decided that you wanted to use the pro, you liked the fact that this was electrically active and conductive and you liked the properties of that. Um, I explained why I don't use it, but if you did want to use it, then what you would need to do is be incredibly careful. And this does have a nice small tip. You would apply it specifically, directly, and only into the one cavity, into each cavity. So you'd put some in each, each of the cavities, and then you'd have to come back and then very carefully make sure that you've cleaned off any excess from the, uh, from the connector so that it was only present within each each one of the cavities. And, uh, but here's what's gonna happen when you, when you slide in the other side, the male side of this, you are probably gonna get some, um, so some of this is probably gonna squeeze out and then go within the body of the terminal and then cross-contaminate across the, 
the, the, the, the different polarity of the different, different ports here. So all of that to say, it is something that can be used and uh, we do not, never use this ever. Don't put it on any bikes and uh, never will. What is this for? It's for lug terminals. Uh, electricians use electrically conductive grease all the time on high voltage circuits, lug terminals, places where you have space to part. If you have physical distance between, between your different conductors, then I'm okay with that. Uh, I also don't know what the melt point is on this. And uh, there's some areas of the bike where you've got some high temps, so you could do your own research and figure out. This happens to be a carbon base. There's a few others. Uh, some have, uh, I've seen some that have like aluminum suspended in the material, but basically there's a electrically conductive material such as carbon or metal that is, that is impregnated inside of the grease. And so for all of those reasons, we never ever use this on a moto application. So what do we use? We use the dielectric grease. And so looking at the label here, this uh, is uh, safe for up to 500 volts. Our bikes are obviously 12. It has a very high melt point, 204 degrees. So that well exceeds uh, all of the typical ranges, especially in the headlight area and around the motor. You might have uh, some issues maybe with the fan, but I would tell you this, we've used this safely for, I don't know, 15 plus years or so building bikes. And I've never once had any issue at all with the material, this type of material melting or having any drip or run issues at all. So the, the, the keyboard whiners on the forums will say that dielectric grease inhibits or prevents electricity from throwing, flowing through a connector. So that's only partially true. We already have established that it is electrically inert and so it doesn't flow electrons through itself, but it does not inhibit electrons from flowing through a mechanical connection. So what is a mechanical connection? Anytime you slide a male and female pin into each other, these are spade, these are six uh, millimeter spade connectors. And so when I slide these into each other, there is a direct physical mechanical contact between the two pairs here, between the two sides. And so the electrons flow through that direct physical metal pressured contact. The dielectric grease does not inhibit the mechanical flow, the, direct, the electron flow through the mechanical contact. All it does is it, it is inert, and so it's just a insulative surround over the material itself. So here's what this would look like. So I take this material here, and I'm gonna goo this thing up, and I'm gonna put it onto the spade lug, and I'm gonna slide these into each other, and there's no such thing as too much. Uh, you'll hear me say this often, you can coat this. So if I want to pre prevent electrolysis from happening on this connector, then I'm going to be very generous and liberal and coat this, coat this sucker up as much as I feel is necessary. And there's no such thing as too much. There may be um, excessive, and so that would cause dust to be attracted to it. So there's some, some slight housekeeping issues as far as that goes. But as far as uh, electrical conductivity, there's no such thing as too much. So once I've got this coated, now what I've done is I've prevented, I've basically wrapped this in insulation. And so I think another way to look at this material here is that it is effectively insulation for your conductors. So now that I have this coated, imagine that it's wrapped in insulation. So water will not affect this, uh, salt water will not affect this, no liquids, um, soap, I wash my bike, all the constituents that are present in soap, none of those are gonna be actively attacking this this connector and then um, creating issues of electrolysis across the mechanical connection. So with, with the grease, that is its objective, is to provide a mechanical insulation from the uh, constituents of electrolysis that will attack that. Especially if you have bimaterial, bi bimetallic material. So you have two different dissimilar materials, that's, that's rare. More often than not, you will have some sort of like um, coated brass material. Uh, those are real typical in these connectors. And uh, that's what we have here. Sometimes you will have, a, it's, what, are, what is the material? So some of the Chinese are not, say like a coated brass. Some of those are, and I, I don't know exactly what the material composition is, what the makeup is, but they will be dissimilar. And so you run a little bit of a higher risk if you use two different materials. All of that said, coating it with grease is the way to go. It is what we do 100% of the time on all of our non-insulated 
connectors. And we have done nothing to prevent the electron flow between the two conductors here. So if I throw my meter back on, then we'll see. So I pulled off the little insulator here on the one side because it's it was small, I couldn't get my probe in there. So here we go, there's my continuity check between these connectors here. So please send me all your links to all the stupid um, paranoia, all those, all those documents, those paranoid documents on the interwebs where people say that you should not use dielectric grease. Uh, I would love to read those. I've read them all, they're ridiculous. Uh, you don't have to believe me. You don't have to take my word for any of this. I'm I'm clearly a crackpot, and you should just ignore everything we've talked about here. But this is what we do. This is what we've reliably done for 15-plus uh, years, and um, it's what we're going to continue to do. The last thing I will say about all of this is uh, to answer the question of, well, what do you do if you have a sealed connector? We never, ever, ever put any grease inside, so this is an example, this would be where there's grommets and the wires coming on that side, and so you, I don't have a male plug with me, but this is where the male plug would go. And so you've got this O-ring, see that black gasket in there. And so when I slide the, uh, the two sides into each other, the gasket provides the mechanical waterproof seal between the two halves of the connectors. And so as long as this is intact, and that is a clean, dirt-free surface, then the water, Proofing, uh, the integrity of the waterproofing is maintained as well as all of the little small o-rings that are going to go around here for the wires. So if you have a untouched OEM waterproof sealed mechanical connector like this, don't put grease in there. The reason is, is because grease is going to take up volume inside of that connector and when you slide the, the two into each other, you uh, will have a pressurized space in there. The grease won't squeeze out past the gasket and then you'll just, it, it will press into itself and then it will stop. You won't be able to overcome the tension that the grease puts into the mechanical connection and it may not latch at all. And so we have had bikes that would uh, come in and a guy will put grease inside of here and then it's not making an electrical connection and he swears up and down that he's installed this and inserted this and that it's um, in sufficient in all the way, but it's not, it hasn't clicked that the male and female connectors aren't made. And so what we'll end up doing is having to spray some electrical contact cleaner in here to get all that grease out, and then they will reliably click into each other. The only thing that I ever recommend doing with these connectors would be to, um, so again, you this, this rubber seal needs to be intact and clean, and then the male side, which is gonna have a smooth body that will slide along there, along the surface, you just wanna make sure that the male side of that connector is clean, doesn't have any dirt or debris on it or deep scratches um, to maintain the integrity of the seal. You could theoretically put a little grease, a little dielectric grease, silicone grease, on that sliding surface, so a little bit around the outside of the, of the body of the male connector here, and then slide that in, and that will just act as a little bit of a slide lubricant along this O-ring. And where we often do this on the KTMs is on the fuel tank connector there. This little terminal here, this connector on your fuel pump on, on your tank of the bike, I often find that this little yellow ring can get stuck and have a hard time going in to the connector here. So I will, in many instances, take this off and then coat this up with some grease, some silicone grease, pop that back on. It'll go into the connector much better but I do not put any grease here inside of the terminals, inside of the male or the female side, just on the gasket. And I think that's about all we have to cover on that. If you have any questions about this or comments, please leave them down below. And I would love to read all your conspiracy theory, paranoia, documents about dielectric grease and how it inhibits the electron flow between mechanically uh, attached connectors. Well, that would be exciting. I would, I would love to read all of those. I can't wait. Um, otherwise, like, subscribe, and um, as always, you know how to reach us on the socials, and you can text us or email us any questions that you have. Go out and get some adventure.